What is up, guys? This is Tamar here. We are back with a Phoenix Wright Ace Journey Part 37. I believe it's 37. Um, we last left off with a new testimony statement added right here, as you can see on the screen. And um, it says the murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. And I was thinking in my noggin, because you know the knife says no prints, traces of the victim's blood found in Edgeworth's toolbox, and all that good snazzy stuff. And I was thinking, I was like, okay, well, if it's planned, then the knife. Like, the knife kind of is just really weird about that. Like, if it was planned, how did she know that there was going to be a knife there, you know? She would have to, like, legit be psychic or really know or something. Or have, like, went into his trunk or some weird crap like that. But I think we're going to present the knife here because it just seems like it fits in. YOLO SWEG 420 hashtag, let's go. Objection. YOLO SWEG. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell lunchboxes for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. Okay. <laughs> Alright. What's with this case? The bloody murder weapon! A red car! All belonging to the prosecutor there! The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? Mommy, I'm prosecuting bad people! <laughs> Oh my god, the defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lena Sky planned this murder, and that's why she ha was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing, the murder weapon? Oh. Uh oh. This knife is, had just or this knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Uh, uh. That, that was, okay, I love the screams. Like I said, I love that. What a what a what a and I love that too. Great, now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. Damn it all to hell. <laughs> right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. Wh what? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not ever such a trifling detail. But this shoots a hole in the t whole premeditated theory! I, I don't like how the faces change when I did it. That kind of made me weird. I, I thought I was going for that kind of th like little voice and then it just changes. Okay. Bah. The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lena Skye, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need to prove. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If she wasn't, why would she... God damn it. Why would she have been wearing blah? Okay. I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you. My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now? Oh, really? <laughs> I love that. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? No, I'm just kidding. The latest guy intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Huh. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I order pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? <laughs> that's that's a good thing to ponder on. In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Okay, there. Oh, God. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna press everything? I mean, I don't even, like... Okay, well, like, let's just get into this. Okay. Let's see what we have first, because I don't even know what the autopsy said before. Alright. Death due to loss of blood. One knife wound. Died from an hour and a half before... Pi one knife wound? Didn't she just say that I uh, Wait, hold up! You can't forget your man Francis. I hit your finger and makes the zombie crew dances. Okay, see here, right here. Nothing else can drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. 
Okay, but this says that it was one time, so... Booyah! Bazinga! You say she stabbed him again and again. But you couldn't have witnessed that! Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moss surprise. I'm afraid that moss is going under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. Uh-oh. Don't make her mad, please. Well, what do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this. Well, take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha! Uh -huh! You're right! Good show, Mr. Edgeworth! What a hunk! He's my hero, really! What about my objection? No one noticed? Well, witness! Uh-oh. And you got the crime scene set, right? Oh, uh, oh, thanks! I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, saying you mistook something for blood. When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify! Yeah, what the hell could you mistake for blood? Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Her red mu- Oh, that red scarf. I guess. That red scarf. But did she- Wait, that red scarf- Wait a minute, she's not even wearing it in this photograph! I knew it looked kinda bare when I looked at it first! She's not even wearing it! That red scarfy thing. <laughs> Miss Star, I demand an explanation. Objection. You fucker! <laughs> the witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim, and you've proved it yourself with this photograph. Huh? But but that that can't be. Only a true professional could be so clueless. I'm sure you'll make a good lunch lady. Have no fear. Mmm, harsh words, but good! In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails! What was my objection? Chopped liver? Yeah, seriously. Fuck all you! <laughs> but it was there! A scarf! No, not that, but something red! Really? Well, now where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude. Now back to business. What? what very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Uh-oh. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Well, ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. Uh-oh. The moment of truth! I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. Apprehending the suspect. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. Huh. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Note to self, Attorney Wright gets bitten by snake. <laughs> she's so, oh my gosh, she's so adorable. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. A oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rawr. Oh my god. Very well, well, Mr. Roy, your cross examination, if you will. This is getting a little intense. Oh my god, my dog's about to bark again. Dog, seriously, you're ruining my dreams right now. <laughs> oh, wow, I say again, but the, I'm recording these, like, kind of in a row, but it'll probably be, like, I don't know, however I work it in the future. Okay. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. Alright, we're gonna press her. So where is this partition on the f floor plans? I'm sure- I, I'm who, Who's talking? Hello, raise your hand. Will the real Slim Shady please stand up? <laughs> I'm sure that she means this wall next to the car. That's right. I don't remember that. 
there's a wall there, about six feet high. Wait, that thing? With the stripes? It doesn't even look like a wall. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. What did you do then? I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Say quickly, were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm, maybe I should press for more details? Of course. I like to see this on the floor plans just to be safe. The Lunchland car was... She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B Block. So you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet from the call, yes! Is that correct, Miss Star? Y yes that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing! The golf club queen! Lunch lady athlete indeed! It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about 9 feet high too. Oh, this guy didn't get away. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. Okay. Uh, so... Okay. Uh, I don't... Okay, I'm just really confused of what the situation we're in right now, so let's just go with it. She mentioned the muffler. What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you my testimony. Seriously, dog? You're gonna bark? Like, really? You're gonna do this again? You're gonna ruin my dream with me? Alright, um... Okay, if I remembered exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky! Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just that one word! So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else. Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? You mean, this cell phone? Uh, ask further, I guess? My phone! You mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory is like a sand heading upstream, you see. No, no, the court doesn't see, Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone beam on the wall. On the wall? That's right. In the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order. So she used her cell phone! Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm, good witnessing, witness! Good witnessing? What will happen to good testifying? That just is really weird. You should of course add this to your testimony! The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. I don't... Under... Why would she use the emergency phone where she can leave prints instead of a cell phone? I don't understand that logic at all, but... She gave up trying to use the phone on the wall and just used her cell phone. I, I don't... I don't understand. Um... Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Something clicked in my little noggin! Let me look at these parking floor plans. Okay! Now, legit... Legit goats... Okay, the red car is, is the car that's obviously there detailed. And they said that she was, like, in the parking space across from it. You can't see my mouse, but it's there. If she was there, and the telephone's on the wall right there, how the hell could have Angel Star seen her with that partition sitting right there? Oh snap, look what we have here. We just got evidence. Okay. Yeah, give me your ear. What? Okay, so so here we go. <laughs> I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lena Sky. Objection! You fucker. <laughs> the witness is a formal detective. Her testimony is unmanned by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor prosecutor? You who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. Ahem, let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. 
However, if that's true... You couldn't possibly have seen Miss Sky making that phone call! Uh-oh. I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it! <laughs> Here we go. What a, what a, what is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch, she's coughing up lies. <laughs> That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you would allow me to, a question. Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about she saw where she saw the order of events. I don't think the order of events. I don't think it's the order of events because you know order of events. Blah blah blah. blah. I don't want. I don't want to mess everything up. Um. What she saw, I don't think that I don't think that was messed up. I want to say where she saw it. I don't believe she was where she was, so we'll click that. We got like five exclamation marks, so we we'll be all right. We're cool. <laughs> she tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. It would be pointless for her to lie about it. Pointless to lie? I say. The witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. In other words. This star witnessed this crime from a different location! Objection. A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Objection. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it! Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard up until now points in one direction. Not the band, but you know, <laughs> the w place from where Miss Star witnessed the murder or witnessed the crime was here. Where? It can't be in the same room as the A block because then she would have like you know, got. What? What? I. What am I even going on? I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm going on. Where could she have been? She couldn't have been in B block because obviously we just realized that that can't have happened. So she had to be in A block. She derps McGurks had to be in A block. Um, she had to. She had to. I mean, I don't understand. Unless the security room because she was delivering lunches to her boyfriend. Maybe she's. A, she's probably. But I. I don't know. I want to say A block, but then the security room because she was delivering lunches. Yolo swag. Whatever. <laughs> Here we go. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room. Indeed, the security room is in the underground parking lot is well positioned. Positioned, I can hear you say. It. It's built on the second level, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm, she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness not being part of the prosecutor's office couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime in the back of the partition is here. I remember in your testimony you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Star? How many years have I been getting the better of men to think that the tables could be turned? Today a man has got the better of Angel Star. <laughs> okay, what a, what a witness! What have you done? You used to be a detective! You should know better! I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Sky? Oh, well, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense! Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. That truth still stands. Objection! Uh-oh. It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? M me Who else? My voice cracked. Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. The star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. She lied and said she saw from B-Block. 
must make a vital difference. What? What would change? Angle of view, distance, difference in light, difference in lighting, totes my goats. Distance to the crime? Angle of view to the crime? I think those, those two sound really good, but I can tell that... Huh? I don't know. I guess it would be distance because really, like... The security office is farther than what she said, or maybe it's closer. I don't... I don't... I don't... Whatever, it's distance. Okay, legit. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime! Objection! My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scenes of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. Objection! Did I get it wrong? What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Uh-oh, I didn't even think about that. Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take to go from there? To the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Sky. Well, witness? You. Uh-oh. Yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? My lunches has gone from low to inedible. I was raking a PB and J lunch with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Mmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend! He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glasswalled station. Oh, there's a doors things. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. Oh yeah, it was locked, I do remember. Man, she ran all that way? Damn! How did, like, Lena not escape? That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking in B Block. That's quite a detour! Yeah, really, damn. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. This is five minutes?! <laughs> That's cool. Hmm, this changes things considerably! But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point. And the spork is a wonderful invention. True that, Holmes. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely! Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something! Do I have any evidence to stop this? We're gonna raise objection because that's the only logical explanation. <laughs> okay, here we go. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You can make pasta in that amount of time. If what? If you like it al dente. Al dente, I think, is what I meant to say. I've got lunch boxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. A five-minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange. If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey! You don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. <laughs> but you have the instincts of a killer. You would run, but this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah, take that picture. <laughs> well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. She has a grudge against the defendant, there is a blank in her testimony. Uh-oh. Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright! Th that was too close. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I'm afraid that the cough of Queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Yay! Oh. What the fudge? Okay. Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to foist off on me. I prefer to not take the defense's team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. Wait, what was that? Is this another one of the, her trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. Uh. 
Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Woohoo! A triple decker! <laughs> He's so innocent. Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Let's hear about this to signs of evidence. Like the lunch lamp motto says, you won't be disappointed. What's she going to pull out of her lunchbox this time? Damn it. Again, okay, well, um, I guess we'll end it here. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed. We're gonna, I, of course, cross-examine next episode. Um, please leave a like, favorite, subscribe. Like my Facebook page. It helps me out a lot. And I will see you guys in the next episode.